Hello and welcome to the 73rd video in this series programming a chess engine in C. So in this video we're going to continue with the export protocol. Before we do that I've made a couple of changes. In UCI.C I've changed the definition of the UCI loop to take in a position and info as arguments because we're now going to be having another protocol function with export and another one with our console mode so there's no point in redefining these inside these functions we can do it in main and send them in as arguments. That means I've removed the freeing the memory line at the bottom here for the PV table. Don't forget to change the definition if you're not just pasting this code. Here in UCI loop and in vice I've here defined them here, initialized and I'm freeing the PV table at the end like this. So in export I've now added a definition for our export protocol and taking in the position info and I've started building up here some variables that we'll be needing and I must say that I've taken the code or some of the code from the Winboard forum where HG Muller who's the active developer of Winboard has put an example driver of how the protocol should be implemented and I've used some of that code or the implementation to make sure we have it right in this example as well because I actually found I've made errors with the implementation I did in my old engines but it's very similar to how the UCI works, you stay in an infinite while loop until you receive a quit. So I'm going to paste in a lot of code here and then in this video discuss the code and really it's pretty dull protocol stuff, it's nothing to do with really the engine so I'd recommend just copy and pasting the code in. It isn't however the finished protocol yet, I'm going to add some bits to it for the next video. So the first thing is we have our time control definitions just like we have in the UCI protocol but this protocol doesn't send us remember our, our depth to search to or anything like this each time we're going to make a move like in the UCI this will be set at the start of each game we'll receive either a level command which isn't in this list we could also receive an SD command which is setting the depth or we can receive if we haven't received the level command, an ST command, which is the move time. And the tricky thing here, and it's highlighted in the documentation for the protocol, is that these commands level or ST, and the or here is critical, and SD, so setting the depth, can be used together in an orthogonal way. So that means that both can be used at the same time. And this is something that's really tricky to remember. Um, remember when you're implementing the Wimboard protocol because it's very easy to assume that they can only be applied separately so you have to make sure that you reset the depth or the move time to in our case the minus one for our time control at the right time and have to bear in mind that the depth can apply even though we've received a move time or we've received a level command which sets the time controls for the game okay so enough of that that will become a bit clearer as I go into programming our time controls we then have engine side both and this is different to the UCI every time we in this because we're not basically totally governed by the GUI in this protocol we're expected to start thinking when the side to move is the same as the engine side so say we're black the user makes a move we'll pass that move make it on the board and come round into a new while loop but now our side is the same as the engine side so the engine side was black so we would then automatically start thinking at the time controls that have already been set at the start of the game. So this is what I mean by it's more of a genuine chess playing program. It's aware of which sides are to move, keeps the, in its data, it keeps the time controls throughout the game, it understands when to call a checkmate, etc. Whereas in UCI, you simply wait for the position and then you're told how long to think. So this is actually more chess playing. So that's why we have the engine side defined. Time left and moves per session are from HD Muller's code and are staying in here, they'll be set. This is the move integer that we pass and here are the two buffers for input. One is set using fgets just as in the UCI protocol and the command buffer here, uh, this code uses just S, S, so string compare rather than string number compare, n compare like I did with the UCI and that's just another way of doing things and what's done simply here is you take the first word of what the input was and store it in command and then compare the two here I think in the UCI I was doing things comparing the straight away what's come in and then specifying the number of characters to compare it's just a different way of doing things 
So quit will set later on when we start implementing things fully. Force is sets engine side to both, so neither white or black, which means when we come through here, we'll never think. So whilst the engine's in what's called force mode, it'll never think. Protover is then you set all of the features um, that you want to have with your engine. And there are many of them. They're described in the protocol here. And if I can remember where they are, I'll find them quickly. Sorry about this, the document's quite big and I can never find anything. Okay, anyway, there, there are, ah, here it is. So there are various things that you can set, debug, memory, SMP, that you support, the various features that you support um, with your engine. And we're going to support ping, which means the GUI to synchronize itself with us will send something like ping3, and we should then reply with pong3. And then the GUI knows how well it's synchronized with us. Setboard means that we'll set the position using setboard and then our FEN string. And that's a much cleaner way than the old way, which is to use an edit and then it would send one by one the characters representing empty squares and the pieces. And it was terrible to pass, it's a much cleaner way of doing things. And it's the same as the position FEN in the UCI. Colors is set to zero, saying we'll never receive a white or a black command. And user move is set to one. And this is also a, an improvement on the old protocol. When the user receives a move, it'll be in this format. When we user makes a move, sorry, it will be sent to us as user move E2, E4. The old protocol would simply have been sent E2, E4, which means you try and process the command. And if none of the commands you have work then it's probably a move so you have a look if it's a move or not and it's much cleaner to have a prefix user move and then this feature done here simply says we're done with telling the GUI what features we support SD is used to set the search depth max and ST the move time per for, for one move max ping I've already talked about we reply with pong and interesting here is new and on the new command the engine side gets set to black not both past the start position and crucially here we now reset the depth to minus one so whatever was set by SD becomes obsolete now and depth is reset to minus one and that's critical because that's an easy mistake which I've made in the past to miss uh, to make and miss this actually miss this out completely so set board is different we set the engine side to both so it's effectively in a force mode and then pass the FEN. And here go, when the go command's received, the engine side is set to the current side to move, which means when we come round in the loop here, we'll then start thinking. And here is the user move, which is I've already explained, we then pass the move. If we can't then we just continue. Otherwise we make the move and reset our play to zero. And that's it for this video. That's all of the commands that I wanted to set so far. The only command remaining to be put in in the next video will be the level command. And then we can start actually filling the various parts of these commands in to actually make the program work and start playing a game of chess using the export protocol. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.